Welcome to Garden Wise Adventures. My name is Malie and I'm really happy to be back. I've taken a little bit of a break for the holidays and it's the day after New Year's. It's a Monday and I am ready to go again to start gardening. And I'm hoping you guys had a wonderful holiday too and that this next year is going to be really good for you. 2002, 2001, 2020, those years were kind of difficult and hopefully it gets better. So anyway, I am ready for a reset. I'm here in my grow room. And one of the later videos I did last year was showing you that I was planting some seeds, getting ready to grow indoors. And I have to tell you, we had huge failures all the way around. Now, first I wanted to go and show you what it looks like outside and tell you how happy I am to have a grow room. So let's take you outside and let you look at that. I wanted to show you my front yard. We got a little bit of snow. We got about four to five inches last night, but it was a heavy wet snow. And I got really, really lucky. My neighbors came and shoveled out my driveway and my sidewalks. Now this year we've been lucky to have more snow than we've had in a long time. I think for one of our ski resorts here in Utah, it's the fourth most snow they've had to this point. You know, this is the beginning of January. But anyway, the most recorded snow they've had in record, sorry, it's the fourth most snow they've had in recorded history. So we've had a good amount of snow and we really, really need it. It's still snowing just a little bit and it's gonna snow into tomorrow, but it's also gonna warm up a bit. Right now, I think it's about 36 degrees. So it's melting a little bit. Here's my backyard. You can kind of see how much snow we got. So that's about four, five inches. We had an eight inch snowstorm a while ago and that melted. So it's been really, really nice to actually get snow this year. And here's what my blue spruce looks like with snow on top. That's why I planted them. I think they're so cute that way. Now the coldest we've gotten so far this year has been 10 degrees, which is really cold, but for Utah, it's a good, you know, it's not that cold. We've gotten colder in the past and it's not cold enough to really harm a lot of my fruit trees, but my figs, definitely the parts above the ground have been killed back. You can just snap them right off. So they're, the ones above the ground are done, but the roots will live through this. The ones that are wrapped, we're just gonna have to see what they look like when spring comes. So now we're back inside and I'm really grateful to be inside because it is so cold out there and it is so warm in here. Now I will link a video up at the top that talks a little bit about my grow room. I've gone over it quite a bit and showed you the lights and everything. But let me take you on a quick tour and show you what failed and we'll talk about why they failed. Now sorry for the fan, I need to leave it on. It is a little bit hot in here. But it looks like there's a lot growing in here, but I have to tell you we had about half the things that I started in here fail. Now over here, some of the partial successes, we've got some peppers that are growing. These are Antohi peppers and they're only half the size that they should be right now. We've got cherry tomatoes. They seem like they're growing pretty good. They are, you know, looking, they're not looking as good as they did last year, but we do have quite a few tomatoes on them. So I am excited about that. The green onions are doing really well, but we had some radishes and some dill over here that failed and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Down here, we have some more cherry tomatoes. Some of them are starting to change color. This one right here is a, what is it? A golden harvest. And the one in the back is a Vilma. I've got a few little tomatoes on the Vilma also. And this is my restart on the kale that is just not going well. These are also only half the size that they should be. My fig experiment, we're getting some growth. We've got new figs in here and we'll go over figs in another video. My satsuma mandarin orange and lemon are looking really good. Some of the lemons are gonna be ripe here in about a month. I think we're losing my avocado and this is an overwatering thing. Last year I needed to water it twice a week when it was indoors and it looks like it just did not like that at all. So I've cut back on the watering and it's continuing to 
to decline, so I think we have some root rot going on. And I'm really thinking that I might tear this out and replace it with something else that I'm going to show you in just a second. Right here we've got some figs that are growing. We haven't had a lot of success, but we've had some success with my figs. There's another one over here. This is my Australian blood lime, and it's doing really well. As you can see, we've got fruit coming on it. Everything in those back pots failed. But here's another golden harvest tomato. Here's some bigger peppers. These are Doe Hill. And a very anemic, with all my trellising, but a very anemic uh, golden harvest that we may pull out. Tried to dig up some mint and bring it indoors. It's not doing so hot. But I do have to say my Roselle cuttings are doing really, really well. They're looking really good. And I'm thinking that we will probably once again get flowers indoors. And this back here is a gift I got from a friend. This is a dwarf Cavendish banana. And I'm thinking that I might remove all the soil, you know, take out my avocado, toss it, take all the soil out of that pot, redo that pot and put the dwarf Cavendish banana in there because it seems to be really, really happy. We have, you know, it's been growing gangbusters. Now, if you watched the last tour of my grow room, you would have seen that there was a lot more stuff in here. I had lettuce, I had uh, some cucumbers, my kale was tall and gorgeous. We had Swiss chard and chijimisai and all of it was looking really good. But what happened is I had dug up a few plants brought in some cuttings, and also my kale had been outside for quite a while to take advantage of the sun. So when I brought everything indoors, I thought I had sprayed them really good, washed them off, thought I'd gotten rid of all the bugs, and we had a bug explosion. The other thing I did is I was reusing potting soil. Now, I had gotten rid of most of the fungus gnats out of the potting soil, and you know it was fertilized or so I thought, and I added more potting soil, brought every, you know, just to kind of mix it up a little bit, added a little bit more fertilizer, brought everything indoors, and then we had a bug explosion. We had just about every kind of bug you could think of. We had thrips and spider mites and aphids, and the fungus gnats got out of control, so much so that they got into the roots of my lettuce and my lettuce stopped growing. So it was really, really bad. So I first tried spraying with uh, insecticidal soap like every few days and I was putting mosquito bits on twice a week and the problems were just getting worse and worse and worse to the point where I finally had to take out, you know, I had to take out just about everything. I removed all the lettuce, I removed all the kale, all the Swiss chard, the chijimisai, those were the worst with the aphids and the thrips because we also got thrips. So those had thrips and aphids really bad and I couldn't get rid of them with spraying. So I took the, I just totally removed those, took out the lettuce, and then I baked the soil, which was a big problem. You know, usually, I think you normally, you're supposed to be able to bake your soil to get rid of the fungus gnats. And it must have been that there was just too much other stuff in there because the soil that was left over, once I tried potting things up in it, nothing would even grow. You could see how small my kale is and my kale should be double that size. The, uh, the peppers should be double the size they are and they are just not growing. And there's fertilizer in there. The possibility is, is that there might be too much fertilizer. Another possibility is that the, you know, when I baked it, there was things like mosquito bits and old fertilizer in there. I don't know if that would have made the soil toxic or not but it's just not growing well at all. So now we're pushing the reset. It's a new year, we're resetting, we're starting again, and we're starting with what worked last year because last year was beautiful. It worked beautifully. I'm creating my own soil. Now I'm not going to have my own compost. I didn't have enough this year. So I'm waiting for some land and sea compost to get here. That's gonna get here next Saturday and I will show you a video of that mix of what I'm gonna do with that. We've got some cocoa core ready to go and uh, some perlite and some pumice. So that is the mixture that worked the best for me last year. So that's what we're going to go back to. But anyway, today we're going to start the tomatoes, the cucumbers, kale, lettuce, chard, chijimisai. We're starting all of that over again. We're not going to get, let the failures get us down. We're gonna learn from them and we're going to get this started again. Now I've shown you many different seed starting videos. I'm not gonna show you how I put the seeds in here, 
What I will show you though is this seed mix is the Espoma seed, start, seed starting mix. It's the one I've had the least amount of problem with fungus gnats. Uh, miracle Grove seed starting mix works beautifully, but it tends to end up having fungus gnats. Um, the compost, when I bring it in, I think I'm going to bake the compost on its own. We're not going to mix it with anything before we bake it. We're just going to bake the compost because I know that will have fungus gnats. The coconut core should not have fungus gnats in it. So hopefully we're going to be able to restart and have everything and have everything work this time. So let me get these seeds started and I'll be right back and show you what I planted. There we have everything planted. Now I am going to start a series a next week, next Sunday, and we'll go over that in just a minute, where I'm going to show you all the little details about planting. And just in case you're wondering and you don't want to wait, this on the top is vermiculite. Now vermiculite is a little bit like perlite in that it increases drainage, but it also holds water. It both increases drainage and holds water. And I have found that when you put vermiculite over the top of your seeds, it increases germination rate and it stops a lot of the green algae that sometimes you get when you're trying to start seeds. So this has really upped my success rate to have vermiculite, but we're going to go over that in another video. So right now what I want to go over with you is what I put in each one of these. Now this is a set, well I guess let me go over one other thing, sorry. This right here is a wicking mat. So this is a seed tray, uh, seed starting tray that is, I guess you call it self-watering. What you do is you fill the tray full of water. It's on some little uh, stands and the wicking mat sucks up the water and then the plants can suck the water up from the bottom. The soil is really, is really porous and it sucks the water up like a sponge. And this is the best way to water your seedlings. Now I do not put water in here until the seedlings have their first true leaf and that kind of helps stop damping off. And that's another thing we're gonna cover in my gardening videos that we're gonna be starting next Sunday. So let's go over the varieties that I've put in here. This first row is going to be Black Seed of Simpson. Now these are going to be a cut and come again lettuce. I just leave them in here their entire life cycle and they get big and beautiful and I just cut them back and I usually get about four cuttings out of each one of these. So we're going to have Black Seed of Simpson, uh, this Rocky Top Salad Blend with a lot of different colors. Those are the two middle ones. And at the end we've got some mescaline that has a little more spicy mix. It's got a little bit of kale and regular and some other varieties of lettuce in there. And I really like to add that to my salads. The next thing that we have, let's go over here. The very end, we've got some kale. This is a landrace kale. And when I say landrace, what that means is there's some Idaho farmers where it's really cold that they're, all, they're growing a bunch of different kale varieties. And the ones that overwinter and then flower and set seed the next spring, they save those seeds. And they do that year over year and they've bred some really cold hardy kales. So these are cold hardy kales, a lot of different varieties in there. I'm not sure what variety we'll get because they've, you know, it comes with a variety, in a variety pack. Then I love the scarlet kale. So we're going to do scarlet kale. And then the blue curly kale is one of my favorites. So we're going to have three different types of kale for six plants total. Next is the Swiss chard, which is in this row right here. And I love having the yellow. So I've, I purchased the yellow separately. I've had a hard time getting the yellow to sprout out of my uh, variety pack. But anyway, so this is Oriole Orange that I'm mixing with my five color silver beet. Now it says this is five colors, but the only ones that I've gotten out of this is white, red, and pink. Then last of, on this one is the Chiji Misai. Now Chijimisai is a mix between Komatsuna and Tatsoi, and it is really, really tasty. I love it. So we've, we're going to have three of those. Now in this middle one, now I put it in a separate one because I'm going to have to put it on a heat mat because we're doing tomatoes and cucumbers. So we've got a China Jade cucumber and a Beta Alpha cucumber. 
Now I did try these earlier this winter and they got a lot of disease in it and I think it was the soil mix that I was using, you know, the one that's caused the problem with everything else. So we're trying it again with a better soil mix. See if we can grow cucumbers indoors. And then I made a little mistake here. I'm supposed to have Dwarf Tasty Wine and Adelaide Festival. So these are just from, a, I can't remember the name. Oh, I think it's Renaissance Seeds that I got these from. Adelaide Festival and Dwarf Tasty Wine. But I mixed, accidentally mixed the Adelaide Festival in with the Dwarf Tasty Wine. I don't know if they're gonna look different when they pop up, but we'll see. You know, if we just get all Adelaide Festival this time, then that's what we get this year. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is put domes over the top of these to keep the humidity in, and then put those under my lights on my racks. And we're gonna start over and see if we can actually get the greens to grow this year. Last year, they did beautifully. I only had to plant them once, and I was eating greens all winter long from my indoor gardens. So that's it for this part. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a series that I want to start doing in my videos. So next Sunday, what I'd like to do is start a series for beginning gardeners and talk a little bit about everything to do with growing a new garden. So if you have a place where you're going to be able to start a new garden, this will be the series for you. We're going to cover site selection. We're going to cover, you know, what do you do first? If you want to start a garden, what's the first thing that you do? And that's going to be the video next week. We're, so we're going to cover site selection, seed planting, how to choose which veggies to grow, how to know what veggies can grow in your area, how to plant them. We're going to go all over all the details on seed starting mixes, how to start seeds indoors, and how to start them outdoors. So we're going to cover everything, and that's going to be a once a week series until we're done. So it'll probably take us through till summer when, we're do when we plant our garden. So there's going to be a lot of fun things coming up and I'm really, really excited to have you guys along with me. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. And if it has been helpful, it really helps out my channel for you to like and subscribe and share it with your friends. And definitely put any questions you have down below. What would be the most interesting things for me to do videos about for you? So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and go have a wonderful garden adventure.